Oh, delighted to be joined on Drive Now, good friend of mine, Harry Cole, political editor of The Sun. How are you, my good friend? Good afternoon. I'm all right. I'm all right. Nearly I, the weekend. I loved what you said. Um, you, you unfortunately weren't able to go to Keir Starmer's 16th Sadly, sadly missed, missed that one. You uh, said the people there were starry-eyed. Yeah, I just think it's one of those things where we're in a weird sort of shadowy sort of a shadow election where everyone's pretending, sort of acting like there's a general election, but yeah. there isn't one. No. And you wonder how they're going to keep that up for potentially, what, another six months if it's not going to be October. But it felt like an election, you know, sort of... We had Rishi's speech on Monday, which was heavily political. We've got Jeremy Hunt doing another... Another That'd Jeremy. Different Jeremy. Doing a... Not um, the sexiest Jeremy in the not, land. That's not Jeremy, Jeremy Clarkson, Clarkson <laughs> indeed. Where did you come another? Oh, my shit. Where did I come? Yeah. About 148. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. Do you know what I mean? Not, thanks for bringing it up. Not gutted at all. Um, so we were just saying to Jake Berry there, who was yeah. quite vociferous, and I said to Jake, I think that this could be a moment where Tory MPs stop fighting and bitching and moaning and actually take this to Labour. I mean, it's all very nice. Deliver economic stability. The first one, how? Not growth. Then. It's, just, it's just... How are you doing all of this? It's just incredibly woolly. And I think what... what you know, he started out in 2020 with 20 pledges you know, for quality and fairness and climate change and all that Where's stuff. That, to win all that. He ditched those ones. Then, we had his, then he had his missions, his five missions, which were, again, pretty woolly, but, you know, basically, here's the five things I want to fix. And now that's been distilled into six pretty poor... Low-grade low policies. I mean, the one on borders, which is to create this new border security command. There already is a border security yep. command. What is the point of that? The first one, delivering economic stability. Great. How? Absolutely. Um, and you Can't NHS NHS wages out as we all want that. Exactly. It's, Where's it's, the money it's coming from? And the problem is, is that two things. One, it's instantly going to be compared to Tony Blair, who, you know, was you know, campaigning in the 90s, but this is a very 90s style campaigning. Just because Blair won a great whopping majority with his five pledges, they were actually five pledges that were quite tangible. They were promises, as in, I will not put up income tax. Mm -hmm. He's not saying that mm -hmm. at, at all. And also, I think what, 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 for me, and I write about this in tomorrow in the paper, is is what's not on that list. That's the fascinating thing. There's nothing on housing, there's nothing on defence, there's nothing on the great whopping benefits bill that's basically going to, you know, if it's not brought down, going to sort of be dragging the entire economy down. There's nothing really on migration, legal or illegal. No, there isn't. There's nothing on, really on crime. Antisocial behaviour, fine, big issue. And it's not my favourite subject. Where's climate change? There was spent 28 billion quid on that. For and government. nothing, nothing on taxes. And you just kind of think, well... If Labour are going to try and go through this election by, you know, they're 20 points ahead, you know, they're in the sort of Ming vase, Ming vase being carried across a minefield <laughs> territory. They don't want to, no one wants to be the, the shadow minister that screws this all up. No one wants to put, you know, their sort of balls on the line to, for want of a better, a better phrase. But at some point, Labour are going to have to tell us what they're going to be, this is, what they're going to do. Well, this is my point. So you, you interviewed him on, on, mm. on, on your programme and I thought it was great. Like, the thing is... <laughs> I think he has done an astonishing job from where they were four years ago. Oh, yeah, they have a total basket case. But, but I have to say that the tent is... I keep using this phrase and people keep saying, why do you keep saying it? Because there's only way I can describe it. The tent is so big, yes. from Natalie Elphie to the woman who got brought back in for being anti-Semite. Yeah, well, totally. Kate, what? I was about no. that one, yeah. Um, that I fear, not that I fear, I think I know, that the minute this man wins power... All of those facets, all of those many different facets, whether it's unions or whatever, are going to start shipping away. And the reason, I mean, I thought Jake was really interesting, he was mm. saying that the trade unions this week had a major, major, major input into terms yeah, of totally. what workers' rights are, which is it's as left as you would like. So the British people, so hacked off, this is what I ask you as, a, as the man who, who has his finger on the pulse politically, the British people are absolutely fed up with yeah, the Tories. They After want change. They want change. Right? Yeah, they want change. They're fit six to back. Are they going to vote for this guy even if it doesn't make any sense? Is that is that the reality? The polls would suggest now that they would. Um, but, you know, polls can change. You know, Theresa May was 20 points ahead in God. 2017 going into that election. I think the biggest fatal problem for the Tories is not necessarily, you know, lots of people bleeding off to reform and a, a, a smaller number bleeding off to Labour. It's just the ones that are just going to stay at home. They're just going to not bother. They're going to sit this one out. They have no love for Starmer, they're six of the back teeth of the Tories, as we were talking about in the break, you know, that sort of feeling that it's it's tea time in yeah. England and it's time for the other uh, the other guys to have a bat. And that and apathy that the other guys will yeah. have a bat and they won't do anything. Well, the thing about is about Starmer, go, yeah. the thing about Starmer, there's nothing scary on that list. Yeah, the Tories are going to basically go, yeah, and he sat next to Jeremy Corbyn, he tried to make Jeremy Corbyn PM twice, but he's not Jeremy Corbyn. He, you know, he, he looks like a sort of, you know, slightly miserable middle management sort of, for almost 
almost sort of like a sort of mid mid league football coach. He's not he's not setting the world alight. No. He's not going to get relegated. He's just sort of middle of the David earth Moyes kind of, is a West Ham middle fan. middle yeah. of the middle of the ground, middle of the, of the road kind of guy. And actually, maybe there is a big part of the public that think you know what. You know, if the Tories say, oh, vote reform, get Labour, and they go, well, so what? You know, it can't be any worse than what's do you going think, on. Le, do you think reform play a part in the next election? Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, you know, if Nigel Farage was to, he doesn't necessarily even have to stand, but, you know, he's going to be touring the country, whipping the stuff up, you know, in his, in his way that he does, you know, on his open top bus, you know, Imagine what would happen if you know his, his mate Donald Trump started getting involved and saying that Brits should back reform. You know, stranger things have happened in an election. Could get really quite lively. But as for the you know, as for Starmer, he's right. He's all right. He's just it's so risk adverse that he's actually making a, a sort of um, a problem for Rod for his own back. As like you say, come when they do get, as it looks like get into power, they're going to have all these different people pulling in all these different directions. He's he is of the soft left. As a Labour grandee said to me the other day, the problem with the soft left is they're soft is that they don't believe in anything really and so there'll be a bit of chivying here a bit of a sop to the unions there and if he doesn't start actually making some specific promises and actually putting some firm things in his manifesto and firm things into his pledges the problem is he's not going to be able to basically hold those pledges as and that manifesto as a sort of rod Wait, above their backs so he's not going to have any he's not he's, he's making problems but by being so vague he now thinks he's he being thinks clever, he's being clever being vague but now. actually yeah. those chickens will come home to roost in power and actually well what is it what is the starmer project for beyond getting into power you said it you said it yourself and we have to move on but you, you said it really nicely climate change defense tax housing housing nothing this yes. is all very woolly and probably what needs to be said right now because the other the other team are on their backsides. But you're right. Down the line, when this gets stripped down, people will go, hold on a minute, what it was that all anything. about? And it, so, you, yes, he's not going to be bound to anything, but he's also not going to have that sort of tool in his arsenal to be able to say, well, you got elected on a pledge to do X, so therefore, you know, you might not like it. And, yeah, your constituents, some of your constituents are moaning, and, yes, the unions are breathing down your necks, but we promised the people we're going to do this. What's he promising? You know, stability. Well, good luck. I believe that when I see it. Good man. Lovely to have you here, mate. Thank Always you a pleasure. so much indeed. Read that article tomorrow in The Sun. Uh, Harry Cole, uh, Chief Political Officer. He's the man. He's the man. He's the editor of The Sun Politically. Uh, tomorrow in the newspaper. Thank you, Harry.